This video is about how are Christians born again. Hi, I'm Bake Adafi, and this is Bible Study Verse by Verse. If you'd open your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 1 in the New Testament, we'll begin in just a moment. Well, how are Christians born again? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, the new birth and a living hope. What is this? Verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again, or given us a new life, a new birth, into a lively hope. So there's intelligence involved in this. We have a hope of something coming in the future by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This blessed be God idea is very similar to what Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, when he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. So, because of uh, God's blessing of us, we bless God. In other words, we are cognizant, aware of, understanding of uh, what He's done for us, and we can't help but give Him praise and give Him glory and give Him blessing. Very similar ideas. We're blessed, <laughs> and then we bless God. We're born again by God's abundant mercy. You'll, you notice that in verse 3? According to His abundant mercy has begotten us again, made us live again. When we were dead in our trespasses and sins, Ephesians chapter 2, even when we were dead, God made us alive in Christ born again by His abundant mercy. As election that we found in verse 2 is undeserved, so is our new birth. It is undeserved. It comes by way of mercy to us. We're born again by the mercy of God. John chapter 3 talks about this. In John 3, verse 3, it says, Jesus answered and said to him, So Nicodemus has come to Jesus by night, Nicodemus is a teacher of the Jewish nation. He is in charge. He's supposed to know these things in order to be able to teach people how to come to God. He says, Nicodemus says, We know you're a teacher come from God. No man could do the miracles that you're doing except God is with him. We, we know you're coming from God. And Jesus just slaps him in the face and says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, John chapter 3, verse 3, Except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Well, Nicodemus, here you go. Here's what you're missing. You're missing the new birth. Except you're born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. That doesn't go just for Nicodemus. That's for everybody. Every person who's going to enter into God's kingdom, see it, partake of it, be there, live there for eternity, has to have a new birth. Except you're born again, you won't see the kingdom of God. Then in verse 5, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man is born of water, that's your physical birth, and of the Spirit, that's your spiritual birth, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Earthly birth, spiritual birth. You have to have both those. You have to be a human being, and you have to have the Spirit of God act upon your life to bring you new life. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's the physical part of us. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit, Jesus says in John chapter 3, verse 6. Then he tells Nicodemus, Marvel not, in verse 7, that I say to you, you must be born again. In other words, under, start to understand this, Nicodemus. Nicodemus doesn't get it at the beginning. He's respectful. At the end of Jesus' life, Nicodemus is there as a believer helping bury him. This guy becomes a Christian. He is, gets born again by the Spirit of God. Jesus says, you must be born again. Then verse 8 he says, the wind, all right, the Holy Spirit is the wind. The wind blows where it lists or where it wants. The wind, the wind does what it wants. And you know this. You go outside and you see the wind and you, and you, you can't say, well, wind, I, I want to direct you down this path and you know hit this orchard of, 
of, uh, of fruit trees and then go out on the ocean and make some waves and come back. You don't direct the wind. The wind does it what it, what it wants and we just observe. We can see when it's there. It's shaking that tree right now. The leaves are uh, moving on that tree. The branches are swaying. The wind is doing this. We can see that. The wind blows where it wants to, where it lists. And you hear the sound of it. You can hear it coming. I mean, in, in uh, tornadoes and, and hurricanes and cyclones and whatever else you want to call it, weather events, it sounds like a train coming. <laughs> it's, it's so noisy. It's so loud. It just sounds like, uh, you know, a, a, a large noise coming at you. You hear the sound of it. You can't tell where it's come from, and you can't tell where it's going. So is everyone who's born of the Spirit of God. The wind is the Spirit. He comes and He gives you new life. That new birth comes from God. It's a spiritual birth. You got the physical birth. What is born of flesh is flesh. What is born of the Spirit is spirit. That thing that died when Adam died in the garden, when he disobeyed God, the day you eat thereof, you surely die. Adam and Eve died toward God. They hid themselves, spiritually dead. The relationship with God was broken. But what happens when the Holy Spirit comes into your life now is he gives you that relationship back. And he does this by convicting you of your sin showing you the Lord Jesus and causing you repentance and giving you faith in the Lord Jesus. You must be born again, Jesus says, to enter into the kingdom of God. Physical birth, yes. Spiritual birth, absolutely required of the Spirit of God. How it happens, it's a function of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives life as He will give life. John 9 Verse 11 and then verse 15 and 16 say this. For the children, now this is how this happens. Jacob and Esau, uh, as you recall um, your history, your Old Testament history, these two boys were twins. Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac had these twins uh, conceived by the same woman, Rebekah, his wife. He had twins. Jacob and Esau. And the scripture says, For the children, Jacob and Esau, being not yet born. So prior to their birth, prior to them having any opportunity to be good people or bad people, uh, express any, any kind of goodness or express any kind of evil, neither having done any good or evil, Romans chapter 9 verse 11, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of works, but of him that calls. So we see election in verse 2 of 1 Peter chapter 1. These people are elect of God. God chose them. God chose Jacob, and he rejected Esau. Esau was not the heir the Lord Jesus did not come through the line of Esau. He became a great nation, a lot of people, but he lost that blessing. And it worked out in his life that he sold it to his brother for a bowl of porridge. Gave it up, didn't care for it. Was hungry and thought he was going to die because he was hungry and he just sold it to his brother. It says... For the children not yet being born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calls. The one that calls is God. The call goes forth when the gospel's preached, and within that message, there are people that are going to hear it and they're going to respond. That's the call. That's the call to salvation. Who hear his voice, drawn to the, to the Father, through the Son, by the Holy Spirit. Verse 15 of John, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 9 says, For he said to Moses, this is his explanation of why these twins were like this. He said to Moses, 
I'll have mercy on whom I'll have mercy. And I'll have compassion upon whom I'll have compassion. So then, verse 18, here's the, uh, verse 16, here's the conclusion, Romans 9, 16. It's not of him that wills. In other words, it's not your decision that saves you. You're not saved without deciding for Christ, but it's not the decision that saves you. It's not him that wills, nor of him that runs. It's not your actions. It's not your works. Works don't save anybody. All our works do is show us how far, far short we fall of God's standard. They point us to Christ. They point us to our need. Not of him that wills or him that runs, but of God that shows mercy. How is it that we're saved? How is it that we're born again? Jesus says you must be born again. Marvel not that I say to you that you must be born again. Here's how it happens. The wind blows where it wants to. Holy Spirit comes in your life, gives you new birth. Takes the substitutionary atonement of Christ and makes it real to you. Opens your mind to it. You see it. You understand it. You see your pitiful condition of sin, your lostness, and you repent and you trust in Christ. Why? It's because God gives you new life. God gives you a new birth. It's not of your will. It's not how hard you run. It's because God shows mercy to us. So we're born again by the abundant mercy of God. And we must be born again to see God's kingdom. It's a function of His Spirit. God purposes in election to have mercy on whom He will. Salvation is of the will of God. Not of man's will. Not of man's decision. Not of man's effort running. This is a great comfort to us in time of stress or trouble or persecution. Your new birth came to you as an act of God. You are elect by God, by His foreknowledge. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. You're predestined to this. It's a life-giving act of God's Spirit to give you life in the Lord Jesus. And we're born again to a living hope. 1 Peter 1, verse 3. He's begotten us again into a living hope, a lively hope, by the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus was raised from the dead. And our hope is, just like he was raised from the dead, we're coming up out of our graves at the last day. The last trumpet, the voice of the archangel, at the trumpet of God. Everyone that's died in Christ is going to be raised again to a new life. Romans 8, 11 says, But if the Spirit of Him, that's the, Lord, that's the Holy Spirit, who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you. So when you become a Christian, this is what happens. The Holy Spirit takes the message of the gospel. Someone preaches it to you. You read it. You hear it. Somehow it enters your mind and He gives you life by that message. And He doesn't just give you life and walk away. He gives you life and He resides in you. He takes up residence inside you. That was what was wrong with Adam and Eve. They died back there and the Holy Spirit left them. And their relationship with God was broken and busted and didn't work anymore because God's Spirit left them. But when you're born again, the Spirit of God comes and lives inside you. He takes up residence inside you. That's why the Bible says don't... Uh, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. He lives inside you. Your body is His temple because He dwells in you when you become a Christian. If the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead, Romans 8, 11, dwells in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken or make alive your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwells in you. <laughs> Here's our assurance because we're saved and we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have the assurance of a resurrected body. It's coming. All we got to do is lay down in the grave and die. Our spirit and soul go to be with the Lord. And then when He comes back, we get a new body. It's just that quick for us. That's what's going to happen for us. As Jesus was raised up, 
so we will be raised up. Titus 2.13 says this, Looking for that blessed hope. This is the Christian's blessed hope. Our hope is the resurrection from the dead, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's coming back, and we're going to be raised again. The blessed hope of all Christians. We've been born again by the mercy of God. We have a living hope of the resurrection that like Jesus was raised from the dead, so we will be raised from the dead. Thanks for watching. I hope the Lord saves you as you commit yourself in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. I have hundreds of Bible teaching videos on my YouTube channel. You can click the red circle icon below to go there. Then you can click on the playlist and select the videos you'd like to watch. If you have questions or comments, on this video, please email me at all one word, Bible study, v by v at gmail.com. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more Bible study, verse by verse.